morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I want to start with a prayer. Father God, I just want to take the time to thank you for your goodness. I want to thank you for your grace and mercy. I want to thank you that you've allowed me to have breath this day, along with all those who are hearing this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The title for today's message is The Importance of Forgiveness. Amen. That's a good one. There are quite a few things you have to do if you want to live in a way that is pleasing to God. And one of these things is to maintain balance. The definition of balance is an even distribution of weight, allowing someone or something to remain upright and steady. For example, imagine that two Christians are committing sin. Eventually, one of them chooses to confront the other about what they're doing. It is good to help and correct others but something's out of balance here. Mm -hmm. All the weight has been shifted to one person, right. even though both people are doing unrighteous things. Mm -hmm. Before speaking to others about their sins, it is important to make sure you are not engaging in sin as well. Right, amen. Committing sin is harmful to the person who does it mm -hmm. because the price of sin is death. Yes, it is. Committing sin and trying to correct others might cause some people to misunderstand God. Not only is it hypocritical, some might think a sin is acceptable if someone who represents God is found engaging in it. Uh -huh. That's right. A Christian is supposed to draw people in God's direction, mm -hmm. not the opposite direction. Supporting sin does not put someone on a path to God. Amen. That's right. That's right. Remember, misrepresenting God is a very bad thing. Yes, it is. But it is not unforgivable. That's right. Christians should not attack other Christians for failing to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Because no person can be perfect. Instead, they should inform those people that what they're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. And pray for them. Yes, yes. Everyone has a free will but a prayer can be very effective. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Forgiveness is a big part of balance. Mm -hmm. It's because of God's love and mercy that eternal life is available to humanity. And God wants love and mercy to be shown through those who represent him in the earth. Yes. Christians, if you seek mercy from the Lord, but you do not give mercy to other people, something is not right there is no balance this is not an equal exchange mm -hmm. it is very important to treat others how you want to be treated that's right Amen. let's go to mark chapter 12 mm -hmm. verses 30 and 31 shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart mm -hmm. and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is the first commandment and the second is like namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other commandment greater than these God cares about his people. He also wants them to care about themselves. Yes, yes. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or are obeying God if you are a Christian already, you are taking steps to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. 
the Lord also wants for the same people who treat themselves with great care to treat others in the same way. As a Christian, you must balance your responsibilities. Yes. You must keep your own life steady so that you are pleasing in the sight of the Lord. I must spread the word of God to other people so that lost souls have the chance to have eternal life. Yes. For example, it is good to read God's word. Mm -hmm. The Christian must know the word for themselves. Yes. That is a part of being pleasing in the sight of, the, of God. Yes, it is. But more has to be done. The word of God is a gift meant to be spread and shared to the people of the world. God does not want you to die, but he also doesn't want others to die. That's right. Remember, every action you take has an impact on your life, and sometimes the lives of others. It would be best to use your free will wisely and make decisions that God would approve of. Yes. Amen. That is the message for today. Amen. Pray that it blessed you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Youth Minister Moses, for that word of encouragement to the people of God and um, the word of wisdom because today we see a lot of people walking in unforgiveness so that was a wonderful message it gets us in remembrance of the fact that if we want to be forgiven for the things that we've done we have to be willing to forgive others also amen, amen. so I knew my son was going to be quick and sharp and powerful like the two-edged sword so um, I was blessed that the Lord woke me up with um, something this morning. Now, if you have gone to my channel, if you already are subs um, a subscriber, you may have seen the comedy video that I did this morning. Really short, but the Lord put that in my mind, so I was led to do that. Now, I'm hoping that it brought brightness, it brought... Um, laughter and joy to the people that saw it because that was the intention of it and also that sandwich was really good but anyway my husband has not seen it yet neither my son but they will so for those that you have seen it you know what I'm referring to and if you haven't go and look at it okay because it ties into what the Lord gave me so the only reason I'm writing reading my notes the only reason I wake up each morning with the ability to smile is because of Jesus. That's the only reason. Because if I looked at the world, it's definitely not because things are going real good, right? right? And it's definitely not because God's church is united and we are on one accord because that's not happening either. So if my mind was focused on those things, my smile would be gone. Because those are not happy things to think on, right? right. But, but God. I thank him because he is the source of our joy. He's the source of my joy. So even though I go through my moments, I trust in God. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 tells me that... God says unto me and unto you, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So certain times we look at certain things and we go through certain things and we feel weak. Amen? Amen. Definitely. Yes. And God says in those moments, his strength is sufficient. His grace is sufficient, right? So we have to have a relationship with him so that we can find strength in times of weakness. Weak thoughts, weak feelings. So this morning, the Lord reminded me of when I was younger. I used to be one of those children on the block with my friends where you can hear me giggling all the way down the street. I would hear my mother say, girl, I heard you laughing all the way down the street. You know, just joyous, laughing, silly. 
And he reminded me of that. And he said, as an adult, laughter is still an important part of our lives. It is healing to us. It benefits us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So when you look at that video, that's what it's about. It's not just for, oh, just, you know, for the, for the, um, for the heck of it. God has a purpose for all he does. So he had to remind me. Remember how much you used to laugh and just have joy? You didn't wake up thinking about bills. You didn't wake up thinking about, you know, all the things that you've been through in life. Because life can wear us down. But when you know Jesus, then you can wake up and get that, find that smile. Right? Not that you feel like smiling all the time, but God. He brings a brightness to your life. So I wanted to share a personal testimony that Lord was um, leading me to this morning because many of us, and this is personal this morning for me and for many that will hear it, we're dealing with great loss, losing loved ones, happening every day around us. And the spirits of grief and sadness and depression, they're, they're hovering over the land, looking for empty vessels, right? right? If your vessel is empty, nothing's in it. You got to be filled with something. We pray it's filled with the Holy Ghost. So, when I was in my, I think I was 20, or 19 or 20, anyway, my father transitioned. And that was the first real passing of someone that I could remember losing someone that close to me, you know? And it, it took me a long time to um, get over that. And I remember my mother looking at me and saying, I wish I can see my daughter smile again. How sad is that? Because I didn't have that connection with Jesus like I have now. I didn't know how to find that smile. I didn't know how to find that strength in weakness. Right. And I knew that my mother was grieving. And so I attempted to replace my father in her life. And I wanted to be next to her all the time. And I wanted to be her everything because I didn't want her to be sad. But how many know it is impossible, humanly impossible, to mend someone's broken heart? So I'm saying this this morning because this is what the Lord said. He said, I want you to uproot the seeds of guilt today and preach Christ, the heart fixer and the restorer of joy. Because many have lost loved ones, especially if you lost a mother or a father. That's something that cuts deep. I remember people being around me, talking to me, but it meant nothing because I, Lord, I miss my mother and my father. They couldn't heal me, no matter how much they wanted to be around me and console me. It was only God. It's only Jesus who can heal that pain. So if you have lost someone, and I know God, this is for someone specific, and you have feeling that you've somehow missed the mark, somehow you didn't do enough to make your mother happy, when you knew she was grieving and sad. You couldn't heal her. You couldn't replace what she felt she lost. And so you feel like, what if I would have did more? What if I would have been there more? Maybe my mother wouldn't have been gone. Maybe she wouldn't have transitioned if I did more. God is saying, you've done enough. You did your part. Your mother knew she was loved. Amen? Your mother knew that she could turn to you. She knew you were there, but 
as a human, we can't replace that void. We can't fill a broken heart. That's God's job. So the wicked assignment of grief is to rob the living of the desire to go on. When my mother passed on, you could have buried me right next to her and I would have been fine with it. I had no desire to go on. And so some of you maybe have lost your husband, your wife, a child, anything. And that grief is telling you there's no need for you to go on. But if God is still breathing through you, there's a reason to go on. Amen? Amen. There's a reason for you to use that situation to minister to others, to live by example. If I could have a camera where you could have gone back in time and saw me before Jesus, before I knew how to tap into Jesus and the grief and the depression and the sorrow that consumed me, you would be amazed that I'm standing here before you because I thought I was going to die and I welcomed death. So if that's you this morning, Jesus is telling you he is your joy, he is your strength, he is your redeemer, and he has more for you to do. Your life is, doesn't end when another person's life ends, right? We are still here breathing. We still have purpose. Have to live. We have to live. There's a mission. There's a vision. There's a people to reach. There's a, a greater calling. Amen? Amen? So God led me to that today. So when you see that video, let it make you laugh. Restore your joy. And know that no human can replace any void. It's only Jesus. And we are going to definitely give you the opportunity to accept this wonderful Jesus this morning. But before then, I'm just going to read into your hearing the scriptures that the Lord gave me. Write them down. Meditate on them. Let them bring joy to your spirit and to edify you. Amen. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save of such as be of a contrite spirit. The Lord is near. Psalms 73 and 26. My flesh and my heart failed, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Hallelujah. Psalms 147 and 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bind up their wounds. Amen. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And the last scripture, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your soul. Your mind will find rest. Your heart will find rest. God says, for me, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I'm just going to tell you those scriptures. Psalms 38, 18, Psalms 73, 26, Psalms 147 and 3, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, Matthew 11 verses 28 through 30. And with that, I say, go in peace with God and do not leave until you recite this salvation prayer as my husband comes this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Laugh today. Amen.
Hallelujah. That's a good thing to laugh. It makes you feel really good inside. Hallelujah. Uh, really try to release the stress of the, of the world and things. Amen. Uh, now we want to give those who don't know the Lord an opportunity to get to know him and, and uh, allow him to save them. Amen. Because at the end of the day, you have to be saved. Yes. To get into the kingdom of God. And so we're going to go to Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. For the heart of men believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. So first of all, you have to believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that Jesus can save you mm -hmm. and set you free. Yes. And you have to open your mouth and confess it. Yes. That, yes. They, that not only the Lord will hear the world will know Hallelujah. that you accept him as your savior, yes. as your king, my God, my God. as your deliverer yes. and your God. Amen. So if you well, take these scriptures mm -hmm. and plant it in your heart. The Lord will save you Amen. and set you free. Yes. After that, you will then have to go and start to live your life as the Lord commanded. Amen. And as you stay on that path, you are truly, truly saved. Amen. So we want to thank you. And God bless you. Subscribe to the channel. Amen. Uh, we pray to have many, many more good content and things from the Lord, Amen. and press the button. <laughs> yes. I truly thank you. God bless you, and have a good night.